Hello everyone and welcome back to modded Minecraft 1.19 where last time we put together this perfectly sized fission reactor for my oversized actually maximum sized uh, industrial turbine and I left you guys with a bit of a cliffhanger because there's still a lot to be done um, we have the coolant going in and we have now filled the coolant tank so the coolant situation is taken care of. We've also got all the pipage, and I don't know if you noticed this, I, I, I did clean this up a little bit. So from the bottom, it looks like it's going in straight into the middle there. Uh, the piping looks a little bit better. So we have the piping all figured out as well for the coolant going in and the coolant uh, going out. So we're good to go there. And like I mentioned last time, we have a place for the power to go. So now we have to produce the fuel that goes into this thing and that is known as fissile fuel so welcome guys fissile fuel is a an extremely complicated thing to make however if you have done what i've done and have set up your or quintupling system if you use uh, uh silk touch with your digital miner and you get the ore form you get five ingots per ore and that includes the necessity of using sulfuric acid so if you already have sulfuric acid then check you're good to go right and let me just show you guys what this is all about so fissile fuel is um amazing you use fissile fuel and burn but to get fissile fuel you have to have uranium hexafluoride in the isotopic centrifuge this is the only machine today by the way that you guys have never seen before everything else we've seen before no, there's two. Excuse me. There's two machines. <laughs> number um, number one of the new machines is the isotopic centrifuge. And it's actually not hard to make. This light ingots with two ultimate control circuits and a basic chemical tank. So we'll be making that here shortly. Now, after the isotopic centrifuge, or uh, technically before, because we're working backwards, you get your uranium hexafluoride by getting hydrofluoric acid and mixing it with uranium oxide in a chemical infuser. Now, both of those things you've never seen before, but you have seen the necessary ingredients necessary to make hydrofluoric acid, and that includes your sulfuric acid. So that is where that comes into play, and you mix it with fluorite um, right there, or the fluorite block, either one, and that is what gives you your hydrofluoric acid. So, uh, backing up again, hydrofluoric acid is not hard to get if you already have sulfuric acid, which we do. The next step is uranium oxide. Uranium oxide is just yellow cake uranium sent through the chemical oxidizer, and yellow cake uranium is just uranium ingots uh, thrown through the enrichment chamber. So again, not a difficult thing to do. So as long as you've had done the ore quintupling system, then it is not a difficult thing to do. Now, excuse the noise in here. These machines, they're working. Uh, hopefully it's not too loud, but down here is my sulfuric acid setup so you can see the only input besides like water and oxygen and stuff is cobblestone right i've got cobblestone going through the crusher it crushes into gravel a gravel in is the gravel is enriched into flint the flint is then crushed into gunpowder the gunpowder is injected with hydrochlor uh, hydrogen chloride which you just get from the evaporation plants and that turns into sulfur your sulfur is oxidized into sulfur dioxide and then your sulfur dioxide is mixed with oxygen to get sulfur trioxide and then finally water vapor is mixed with that sulfur trioxide to get sulfuric acid if you guys haven't seen the video on that be sure and check it out all right it's very good uh so that 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 cuts a big portion of our, our work off is what i'm what i'm getting at all right so after that all right after that so we need particular machines most of them you've seen before you've seen a chemical dissolution chamber i have it in my inventory you've seen chemical infusers uh you've seen enrichment chambers you've seen chemical oxidizers you haven't seen the isotopic centrifuge so let me go in and craft that baby and just as a uh a reminder this is how you make those parts, okay? Enrichment chamber, super simple. You've you've probably done that a million times at this point. Chemical oxidizer is a dynamic tank, personal chest or personal barrel, and a basic chemical tank with four infused alloy in the corners and two basic control circuits on the top and the bottom. Not a not a problem, but not like super cheap and super easy. The chemical dissolution chamber is quite expensive with four refined obsidian ingots on the corners, two ultimate control circuits, the steel casing, and two basic chemical tanks, and then the chemical infuser itself is not too bad. Four infused alloy, two basic chemical tanks, the steel casing, and two basic control circuits. So we've made all those before. Uh, right now we're going to make this isotopic centrifuge, which I've got everything in my inventory that I need to make this. Not a problem whatsoever. 
There we go. All right, so let's begin today by crafting and getting fissile fuel. And I am trying to decide where I want to do all this. I don't really want all the machinery to be out here, but this is technically where it needs to be. So, um, I maybe I'll round the corner. No, I'm going to be, I'm going to need to be able to engage with it pretty often. So, you know what? Let's put this on floor number three. I haven't put anything on floor number three. So let's make fissile fuel up here. It's, it's the only thing I've done with it so far. So starting right here, we're going to need power. So you know what? Let me bring my, uh, my quantum and porter up here. And this is going to provide the power. So probably should put it maybe like right in the middle. All right. That is a, it's a good start. Now, the enrichment chamber. And by the way, all of these already have their speed and energy upgrades. I've already installed them all. The enrichment chamber is what's going to be receiving the uranium. So um, again, like backing up and reversing course a little bit so that I can show you guys what's going on. There you go. So the enrichment chamber is going to receive the uranium and create yellow cake uranium. And then that yellow cake uranium needs to go into an, a chemical oxidizer to create uranium oxide. So actually, it would probably be good for me. It, okay, I've got a better idea. I've got to turn this thing because I need to be able to get my power um, and I think I'm going to put the power in the back. So, uh, yeah. So quantum entangler porter here. Let's put it. I don't want to block everything off either. It's a, it's a little difficult to pick a good spot. Okay. You know what? That'll work right there. So the enrichment chamber, you'll get power out of there. I have cables. So probably should just use the basic cables. No problem. Uh, enrichment chamber. Oh, I'm sorry. No, the quantum entangler porter is set to power and power is set to now output everywhere. So this enrichment chamber now has power. The enrichment chamber is gonna kick out its uh, yellow cake uranium into this chemical oxidizer. So let's go ahead and throw some power into there. There you go. It is now charging up real nice like and backing up once again. Yes, so after the chemical oxidizer turns the yellow cake uranium into uranium oxide, I need the uh, uranium oxide to go into the chemical infuser. So chemical infuser would be this one here. So we'll set that down just like so. And I also want to give it power. There you go. The chemical infuser again will receive the gases. So we'll make sure the gases are set to output on the right. And then it will receive one set of gases on the left. That works. And then actually it's going to be receiving the other gases on the bottom. So, you know, might as well change that up just like so. Very good. All right, and then the other side of the equation, and you just have to kind of burp your dirt back and forth to figure this stuff out. So uh, chemical infuser, so the, now the hydrofluoric acid, the hydrofluoric acid is gonna be made in the chemical dissolution chamber with the sulfuric acid and fluoride. So chemical dissolution chamber needs to be right here. And um, right here, we're going to be bringing in, well, power, first of all, right? So we're going to bring the power in. There you go. And we should probably tell this enrichment chamber not to eject items out the right. We should tell it to eject items out the top. And then this one should be receiving items in the bottom. Good. Okay. Okay. So we got it all figured out. So the chemical dissolution chamber will receive fluorite, which I'll have to put a bin or something in front of it and fill it with fluorite. And then it also will receive the... Um, sulfuric acid. So that means that I need another quantum entangler porter. It's, it appears I'm going to need more than one of those today. And we're going to need to change this um, to sulfuric acid. There you go. Now gases are going to be sent out the right, which means now this chemical dissolution chamber should, there we go. Now it has received all sulfuric acid and then it will eject what it makes out the top and again this thing's already been set up to receive out the bottom so now the last thing is this thing will need to eject its gases out the right and i'm going to set up the centrifuge which looks amazing by the way and it is going to receive gases well everywhere i guess um, and actually I did tell it to, cause I was facing this way. That is the back. So technically it's the back that has to be input. And then it's going to be the front. That's the output because the output has to go 
um, you know, into, I guess, another quantum entangler porter and then be sent to the fission reactor. So this all should, in theory, be working. So what I want to do is grab a single uranium because I just feel like I, I want to see what like how much power we get out of a single uranium. I like how it's red. That kind of works. So let's throw a single uranium ingot into here. That has been converted, and now we have uranium oxide. And the other two, ah, I've I've got to get, I've got to get fluorite. Okay, so I've got a bin, and, um, well, I've got. That's all in a bin. I mean, I might as well. I've got an idea. Here, let's let's do this. Let's put the basic bin back and put like one fluorite. I'm gonna right click that so it doesn't change. But I've got a lot of fluorite, nine thousand fluorite sitting in uh in this bin so that's gonna be that's gonna come in handy so to eject the uh the fluorite i'm gonna have to set it here it's not pretty i'll come up with a better syst uh, system later on i just want this thing working and i knew i had a lot to do today so i'm not gonna look back all right and that is not what i need i need a um where is it there we go logistical transporter to transport items and you, my dude, need to receive items in the front. That's perfect. And let's set this thing to automatically eject. There you go. Okay, so now it is using sulfuric acid and using fluorite to produce hydrofluoric acid. It is going into the infuser. It has filled that up. And the two have combined and emptied out and gone into the centrifuge. And now uranium hexafluoride is turning into fissile fuel. There you go. We got it. Now, of course, I need to speed this poor machine up because it is it is terribly slow. There you go. All right. So a single piece of uranium gave us 1000 fissile fuel. Very nice. All right. So uh, because I didn't think about quantum entangler porters until now, I actually need to make two of them. One of them to receive the fissile fuel and one of them to eject the fissile fuel. All right. Quantum entangler porter in hand. Let's slap this down right here. We're going to make a uh, a brand new channel. This one's going to be called Fissile Fuel. There we go. No, no, no. It needs to be. There you go. Capital letters. We like correct grammar. Uh, I guess it doesn't really matter in this case. It's just a gas. But yeah. Okay, so we're going to input on the left. And it has been set up. So now the thousand millibuckets of Fissile Fuel is in the Quantum Entangler Porter. And no longer in the isotopic centrifuge. Now, um, I think it's dark. So I should probably sleep. Yep, it is dark. Now let's input the fissile fuel into the fission reactor. And all I need here is, um, well, you know what? Ultimate tubes probably is a better option in this case, just because it looks nicer in my opinion. All right, there you go. And this one's gonna be set to fissile fuel and gases, uh, gases set to output the top. There you go. So now you can see that the reactor has my 1000 fissile fuel and the quantum entangle porter has none. Perfect. Okay, so we've done the uh, the fissile fuel part of the video already. That's pretty cool. So if I just X that off, perfect. Fissile fuel is done. Next step is setting up what to do with the byproduct. Yes, because after you start burning fissile fuel, you will end up with a nuclear waste byproduct, which we have none yet. But I want a way to handle it. I want a way to, to deal with it uh before we actually turn the thing on so what that means is that we need radioactive waste barrels and i i've got to go craft obviously so to make a radioactive waste barrel and i'm going to make a lot of them but I, I don't know if i'll use them all today i'm going to use 16 of them uh they do stack so it's not a problem the way to make those is just lead and steel in that you know cross and x pattern and with an empty center uh, the radioactive waste barrel is amazing because it will decay the radioactive waste and get rid of it slowly but surely. One millibucket every 20 ticks or every every second. And so this stuff is very important. In fact, I will probably end up doing what I've done in the past and put a lot, a ton of um, radioactive waste barrels down on the ground somewhere. That way I can dissipate all of the, nu the nuclear waste that I make super easily. So that's, uh, that's step one. <laughs> We're going to need to actually use them, but that's step one. Step two is the solar neutron activator. And I've already got a pressurized reaction chamber. I'm going to exit that. So the solar neutron activator 
is the machine that is going to use the nuclear waste. And eventually we're going to be making polonium, right? But you get the liquid form first and the liquid form comes from the solar neutron activator. Now there's a problem. And the problem is, well, you might be able to tell what the problem is. It's not the bronze, it's not the blue squares or the blue circles or even the steel casing. No, it is the HDPE sheets or single sheet. We don't have the network set up to make this. So we have to set up the network. All HDPE sheets are is HDPE pellets in a circle on the crafting table. And to make this, you have to throw a substrate, which is the byproduct of burning ethylene in the gas burning generator, or actually in the pressurized reaction chamber to make ethylene, you, you get substrate by burning biofuel. But you have to throw ethylene, liquid ethylene, not gas ethylene, but liquid ethylene and oxygen with substrate through a pressurized reaction chamber to get HDPE pellets. Oh boy. So I have all the parts and pieces that I need to do this. Um, it's just kind of a pain because I, uh, it's just, I'm, I'm not going to use this much to spend all of this time is is kind of annoying to be honest but you know what it's all good you know it's all good so how i'm going to do this is very simple by the way i don't know if i mentioned this but i i did take apart the melon farm the reason being is because i ended up with a an ultimate bin of 167,000 substrate which means that's how many biofuel i've burned throughout this series and i still have 32,000 melon slices still in storage and my ethylene is burning out of an ultimate chemical tank it had eight, eight million or something millibuckets, and it's still a 7.7 .7 million and I'm processing ores like crazy. So yeah, I'm, I'm doing just fine as far as that goes. So, uh, question is this, e oh, this is ejecting hydrogen blast. Okay. Well then what I have to do is, Hmm, I guess I'll have to do it on this side. Uh, the, the oxygen's on this side and I could swap them. I mean, there's no reason why I couldn't swap them. I just, do I even need this hydrogen anymore? No one's using it. Well, my, uh, my jetpack uses this all the time. So I'd rather not take this apart, but I could swap it. If I swap it, then I can just set the pressurized reaction chamber right here. Assuming that this ultimate chemical tank. Oh, wait a minute. Ah, I just almost fell for my own problem there. Um, I have to send liquid ethylene ah okay we're good so i have this rotary condensator here this thing needs to accept no not hydrogen dang it okay i think i've got everything set up to not eject and stuff in fact you know what i'm gonna tell this thing not to eject either yeah you just don't eject anything how about that there you go so to, to deal with this i'm gonna have to use this gauge dropper not a problem necessarily just kind of annoying so i'm gonna pull this out of there and, um, okay, now I have ethylene in one side and liquid hydrogen in the other. And then hydrogen in this gauge dropper. Okay, how do I handle this? I have a uh, hydrogen chemical tank here. I can place this down and slap that down in there. If I dump excess, it gets rid of that hydrogen there. Okay, that's not too bad. I, I'm good now. So now um, I use this dropper. You guys have seen me use this before. It's amazing. And then select that liquid ethylene there and there you go now we have uh or i'm sorry liquid hydrogen now i have liquid ethylene from this rotary condensator which is 100 maxed out and uh perfect so now let's slap down the pressurized reaction chamber right do i have do i have uh power cables yes i do perfect so slap that down uh i will place the pressurized reaction chamber right here and this thing should receive the liquid ethylene immediately. You know, yeah, there, there you go. You're set up. You're good. What about this side? You're also set up. Why aren't you ejecting your liquid ethylene, sir? There you go. It was a front input. I, apparently, I forgot that I put the rotary concentrator facing that way. So now the pressurized reaction chamber has liquid ethylene. It also needs oxygen, which can be brought out of this thing. So... Uh, or, or actually it's that machine, but it's the cleanest way to do it. It's just to bring it around. So let's bring it around. Um, do I really only have three basic pipes? I don't want to have to make more, but I guess I will if I have to. All right, there you go. More basic pipes. I have the ultimates, but I just don't, I, it seems weird to use that just for this. So, okay. So slap that down there 
and tell it to accept gases on the right. And I guess tell this thing to eject gases as well. <laughs> oh, wow. It's set to output. Okay. Um, are you able to? Great. Now I don't know which side. Actually, this is why this thing is able to do this. Here, let's check this out. I've never done this in a video, but I'm going to select gases. And I'm literally just going to shift right click that that side because I can't tell which side that is because I don't remember which direction I put it um, whenever I set it down, which side I set it down. So to not mess up my input outputs, just manually select it and it, it seems to work. So there you go. Uh, liquid ethylene and oxygen. Let me grab now. Um, let's see. Do we have? Yes, we have a logistical transporter. So I'm going to place this logistical transporter right here. Uh, you don't need to interact with this because you don't deal with items like at all. So I'll just blank that out. And now place down this bin with the substrate. We're going to have so much HTPE, it's going to be ridiculous. And then uh, with configurator, shift right click and it should accept the items in the back. Yes. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Um, There's supposed to be a byproduct here. I, I don't know. What's the byproduct for making? Oh, there is no byproduct. I'm literally just like purifying the substrate into something better. Great. Okay. Well, then uh, I have finished. I have finished setting up the system that I needed to uh, to get HDPE. So now I can make that one stupid little item I need to make the solar neutron activator. Uh, well, I'm sure it'll come in handy in the future, but that was just annoying. All right, make the circle, get the HDPE sheet, and now I can combine everything to get the solar neutron activator. There we go. Excellent. So now I'm going to shift gears to definitely wanting ultimate machinery because, you know, or not ultimate machinery, ultimate tubage. Is that is that a way to put that? Ultimate tubage? Because, oh, wow, I don't have any more. I don't have any more ultimate tubes. Well, I've got to fix that again i made a stack of them i'm gonna make a stack of the advanced make a stack of the elites and make a stack of the ultimates which i'm actually running low on atomic alloys so i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to fix that at some point but uh but there you go all right so i've got loads of ultimate pressurized tubes because you just you just want as much capacity as you can when it comes to radioactivity is it dark again my goodness Okay, sun is up. Let's begin this process. Now, I've realized that um, I need this to be one higher. So, you know, uh, unfortunately, like I was always afraid to to remove blocks from multi-block structures once they've gotten stuff going on. Obviously, you don't want to do that when it's running, uh, but not a problem otherwise. So we're, we're good. We're good. It's it, it, It'll bounce right back. There you go. And it's still got all of its water in it and everything. So we are we're golden. So Let's set that to output, which uh, for the radioactive material, that is the output. And then let's place an ultimate pressurized tube and then a radioactive waste barrel. So all that stuff will come into this radioactive waste barrel. I'm going to place another one down just like so. And then a solar neutron activator. Now, this solar neutron activator is solar, so it has to have view of the sky and it does not receive any upgrades. So we're good so far. Now, what it's going to be doing is going to create polonium, right? So we're looking for polonium pellets. It's going to create the liquid form of polonium. So I need to now send the polonium into another machine, obviously the pressurized reaction chamber. And I'm afraid I, I'm afraid I haven't given myself enough room, actually, <laughs> now, now that I think about it. So I've decided to move it to the other side. There's more room and uh, it's it's protected. It's, it's protected enough. I'm not I'm not too worried about it. I'm a little worried about it, uh, but I'm not too worried about it. So before we even turn this thing on, though, we'll talk about radioactivity uh, safety measures and, and, and whatnot. So one thing that I didn't mention is, yes, this thing is solar paneled, so solar powered and everything. The only input square is in the back of it. Or you might be able to come in from the bottom, but the output is the front. It is only the front. So you have to um, leave the, the front of it open if, if you're going to be using it. So now pressurized reaction chamber. I'm going to need to bring 
water and electric or uh, water and power over to this thing i've got water in it already because this is actually the pressurized reaction chamber that was making ethylene uh to begin with you know what another quantum entangle porter would probably make this nice and clean let me just do that real quick by the way just a heads up you cannot quantum entangle port radioactive waste or any anything that is radioactive so just a just a heads up so uh i've decided to rotate things and i'm going to place down this quantum tangle porter right below it and i'm going to be ejecting uh power which means not only power but also water so that's uh that's a thing so now we should have unlimited power and water i'm also going to be needing well the polonium right the polonium will be coming through and i'm going to be needing fluorite right and not just like the fluorite crystal version but fluorite dust and the way you get fluorite dust is you literally just crush fluorite into fluorite dust so just for demonstration purposes i'm gonna go manually crush a stack of fluorite dust or fluorite into fluorite dust and then ah and oh yeah it's all upstairs my bad i totally forgot there for a second so i just realized i did something funny uh so the fluorite is crushing in this extra crusher that I had from uh, crushing all the melons and I placed it down here this is under the ore processing plant and in and, and it happened to be next to this quantum tangle porter which is set to the power frequency the one I'm just using and I didn't realize that it was ejecting into the quantum tangle porter so now that fluorite dust is in the quantum tangle porter that's using the same frequency as our polonium setup so all I have to do is instead of like manually porting that stuff over all I have to do is tell it, hey, eject your items, and also, hey, accept your items from the bottom. So it's just funny. It's ironic that it, that, that happened that way. So uh, let's see. Items. Uh, yeah, items on the end. There we go. Uh, and then you, you can eject items also, but from the top. So now, haha, -ha, we have fluorite dust. Absolutely perfect. So now uh, the only thing that is left is... We're going to have ourselves some, uh, and actually, I just I just realized we may want to put this this quantum entangle porter is oh oh this <laughs> wow hold on wait 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 that's that's ironic too I didn't realize that uh take this off yeah there we go um I'm gonna want the radioactive uh, waste this thing makes I want it to go straight down that way we don't even see those pipes but this quantum entangle porter that I was providing power to the pump with is on the same frequency. So why not just use it instead? You know, so power, it's set. Um, items is is set to eject it. Oh, this isn't the same one, is it? No, it's not here. Let's, uh, let's swap those, set that one down. So this one, this one should understand ejecting items, but it's going to be ejecting out the back now. Uh, so, you know, don't eject in any direction. You receive items from the front, which you are. You also want to receive fluids and um, am, I, am I dealing with gases? I don't think so. And then power as well. So everything should be working now. The gas is actually going to be coming for this thing on the back. So, yep, we're good to go. And then I guess the last thing I need to do is reconnect this for power and fluid to keep that um, that pump working. So... Let's get, yeah, one ultimate mechanical pipe and one ultimate cable. Yeah, this is efficiency. I like this. So one ultimate cable, one ultimate mechanical pipe, and there you go. So now the radioactive waste will go down from this reaction chamber, because I'm going to tell it to real fast. Yeah, just output that way. Um, and then we will set a, I should probably have like a, yeah, let's have, let's make an underground, um, reactor like a, a nuclear waste place right so we're gonna go way down here that's pretty good and then i'll chop this out and let's say like five no seven seven by seven or so that'll work and then guys we are ready to pull the trigger hopefully i don't hit any caves or anything but i think that we are we're in really good shape now to uh to start this thing up except for one little thing and what is this ah just a cave I've been here before, obviously. I just forgot about it. All right, guys. I had 15 barrels, so I just made a 3 by 5 And I brought this uh, tube down from the uh, pressurized reaction chamber. So this should all work out perfectly. So I just connect it all. And what this is going to do is it'll dissipate. Like I, like I said, these barrels dissipate the radioactive material. But 
it will uh, it'll actually divide the radioactive waste among these 15 barrels, making things way better. So now I hope I have a teleporter because if I don't, I do. Excellent. OK, so I'm going to just go ahead and place that down just like so. And we're going to call this one. Uh, let's call this one radioactive because everyone knows what that means. There you go. All right, and to get out of here and into here, I have to have my portable teleporter. So do I have, I could have sworn, that's just weird. I don't know, I don't know what happened there. Um, I, I guarantee you, I have a portable teleporter. It just wasn't, uh, yeah, it wasn't in my inventory. All right, so let's let's check out what we got going on. So the fuel fuel is working. The polonium setup is done. I just don't have nuclear waste yet to demonstrate. The next thing is safety first, right? Um, because, yeah, as soon as we turn this on, we are now dealing with radioactive material. So we need to make the hazmat suit. Hazmat mask, gown, pants, and boots. Because if not, if you're not wearing hazmat stuff and radioactive material does leak out, you dead, right? You're, you're just simply dead. I bet you my portable teleporter is in here somewhere. It, it is, uh, it's chaos. You know what? I won't worry about it right now. So to make the hazmat stuff, you do need orange dye for three of the pieces, and one of them has to be black dye. So to make orange dye, you know, orange flowers or red and yellow, and I have kind of both. Um, I have one orange flower, and then I have some red and yellow just for demonstration purposes. So by using the orange flower burning blossom from Biomes of Plenty, there you go. Got myself an orange dye. Or I can have um, red dye and yellow dye from these two flowers, dandelion and poppy. And then if I put them together, it should give me, yep, two orange dye. Excellent. So I was able to be super efficient there. I've got three of them now. And it's real simple to make these. Orange dye with lead in the proper orientation to make whatever you're making. So a helmet is shaped like this. No problem. The uh, gown, which is like a chest plate, is shaped like this. And the pants are shaped like this, again with the orange. And then for the boots, you have to have black dye with lead. And so to make black dye, all you have to do is have an ink sack. Um, I think that's the only way to do it, as far as I'm aware. I, I didn't look. I, I should have probably, but yeah. So uh, lead with black dye. I'm basically wearing lead that's been formed into clothing. So hopefully, you know, it's not too heavy. I'm, I'm used to wearing um, obsidian, so... You know, it's heavy too. So throwing that on, throwing that on, and throwing these on. There you go. Guys, I am ready. I am so ready to go flick this switch. Oh, yes. And I'm slow. Why am I so slow? I guess because I'm wearing this big gaudy thing. So just double checking. Yep, I got all the pieces of the puzzle done for hazmat and safety. I Oh, I already did the HTPE stuff. I didn't even... That was not in order. That's why. That's why I forgot about it. Uh, so all we have to do left, guys, is flip the switch and everything should work. So naturally, I'm going to leave the burn rate on the lowest it, it, that it can. Uh, and I don't want to do this at night either. Great. Now I get to slowly walk up to the bedroom. I guess it doesn't take that long to get here. There we go. So one thing I've been wanting to know is how much power are we able to get out of a single uranium ingot. Because remember, I only used one uranium ingot to make the, how much is it? 1,000 fissile fuel that we have. Um, and we're gonna find out what that amounts to in power because my induction matrix is completely empty as well. So this is gonna be a kind of a fun little experiment. So without further ado, guys, oh man, to smile, take, take a picture of this moment. We're gonna flip the switch. I'm wearing a hazmat suit. I look great. The mask is just fantastic. And uh, I'm ready. So if something goes wrong, I'm protected. All right. Activate. Okay. So you can see the temperature is going up. Fissile fuel is burning. We are not accumulating coolant or waste. The, uh, the, 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 the turbine is not really spinning either. It shows nothing happening. It actually shows... It actually shows nothing happening. Uh, am I not making any power? Yeah, it's showing empty. Okay, well, hopefully, um, this is flatlined. I'm not. I'm not gaining heat, or am I? Am I gaining heat? Ah, okay. My burn rate is so low. <laughs> my burn rate is so low that it's taking forever for things to start happening. Yeah, now we're gaining steam. 
There you go. Nice. Okay, now while, that, while that's happening, let's take a look at the solar neutron activator. Take a look at these pipes. There is supposedly nuclear waste collecting in this waste barrel. Now, if you shift right click and you have chat turned on, it'll tell you how much waste is in there. But I have um, I have this, this mod that tells me, so I'm all good. Now, I knew this was going to happen. So I'm going to pull out my configurator, go to gases, shift right click underneath the barrel, tell it to not push, but pull. And now there you go. The uh, barrel is empty and the solar neutron activator is receiving nuclear waste, converting it into polonium, and the polonium is accumulating in the pressurized reaction chamber. So that is working. That is working entirely good. Now you have to have a thousand millibuckets to, for this thing to actually do something, but it's gonna take some time for that to happen at this rate. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure that we weren't having any, any issues. So um, yeah, steam is still accumulating because things are going so dang slowly. Why not? Why not turn this up just a notch, all right? We'll go to burn rate of one, all right? That that should, yeah, that's going to burn up our fissile fuel significantly faster. No changes. We should start seeing the little one. Yeah, there we go. See, we have the little one turning over there. Uh, and I'm really curious about how much power, if any, we're getting. Ah, okay. Yeah, we are we are gaining power now. Ha <laughs> ha. Excellent. So, uh, guys, I'm going to take a minute. I'm going to make a whole bunch of fissile fuel. Don't go anywhere. We're going to turn this baby up to high octane or high gear or whatever. It is the next day, guys. And after letting the computer run all night, I have maxed out my fissile fuel at 4.4 million millibuckets. I also have used the rest of my uranium and my quantum entanglement board is not quite full. It's hard to tell because the fissile fuel is dark and uh, the background of this is dark as well. But you can see kind of, if I maybe put it, yeah, there you go, up against the, the sky back there. You can see it's not quite full. 7.386 million millibuckets. So the grand total is 11.786 million millibuckets, which makes sense because I put 11,786 uranium into the system. So we got we got more than enough fuel now. Fuel's not going to be the issue. Um, I also, I told you guys I wanted to look at one more thing. So I actually, out of a single uranium ingot, which gave us 1,000 fissile fuel, I, I got 185.31 megajoules of power, which if you do the math on that, because a megajoule, um, it, it stacks up, you have a joule, then a kilojoule, then a megajoule, so it's basically millions, right? 185 million joules. And then after that is gigajoules, which is billion. And then you have four terajoules, which are trillion. So uh, how many times does 185.31 million go into four trillion? Well, I've already done the math. It's 21,600. So what that means is that I would have to have 21,600 uranium ingots transferred into and converted into fissile fuel and burn all of it to fill up that one little block, that ultimate induction cell. So just, that's just kind of crazy to me. Also, heads up, um, I, I believe, I can't confirm this, but um, I took out my a bunch of fluorite to feed into the other system that required it after crushing it. And it is a, I think it's a two to one ratio. I think that this fissile fuel machine uses two uranium ingots to one fluorite. I may be off on that, but that's what it looked like to me at the time. So now guys, are you excited? I'm very excited. Let's turn this thing on and see how high we can get it. So we're right now we're starting at one millibucket. We shouldn't have an issue with that. What I do is I make sure that this, the, the temperature levels out, which it has. I make sure that there's nothing in the heated coolant tank or the waste tank. And I also make sure that the steam um, levels out, right? We don't want the steam to, to continue to go up. Actually, it should. Actually, it doesn't really matter if this continues. What's most important really is that there's no heated coolant in there. And then also that we don't run out of water. Um, and then I'm also going to be double checking this over here because I didn't. You know what? I'm going to put a bin on this i have a bin Ah, that's that's convenient uh i'm gonna place a bin right here and i'm gonna tell this thing you can eject items out the top there you go so now once it makes polonium it should kick it out the top very nice also if you notice these green particles that means there is radioactive 
uh, material going through this, but you're not dying, you're not getting hurt, nothing else is dying, you're not hearing a clicking sound, that means that it's contained currently, but be careful. All right, so let's crank this machine up now. Um, I have to, oh, okay, okay, so uh, this is still set in sufficient fuel. It, remember, last time it was going off like crazy. All right, let's 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 crank this thing up. Let's go to eight, let's go to eight millibuckets. And the water doesn't even move. Um, you can see that the heated the heating rate is eight times 20,000, so that looks like it's good. Steam is max or capping out. We're not collecting power there. So let's keep going. Let's go up to uh, 16. And, you know, again, I should theoretically be able to go all the way to 550. Is there a reason to do that? Like, do you need to do that? No, you don't. You don't need ever to burn 550 millibuckets. Like, that's ridiculous. But, you know, hey, why not, right? So, oh, we're, we're not getting power. We're not getting power in the... Uh, pressurized reaction chamber you always got to check these things okay so this so this um let me see quantum tangle porter you should be ah eject out the back there you go okay now we have power uh and we need <laughs> we need this thing to eject uh water as well out the back are we good now yes okay so this is why you double check everything as you go because if we uh yeah if it'd be bad also just while i'm thinking about it this is polonium you also can get plutonium plutonium is another thing that you can get it's significantly less nece uh, less necessary but it is something that we'll be getting so all right 32 this time no problems whatsoever again we shouldn't have any problems at all but again i i'm just i'm being careful here so let's bump it up to 64 this is uh this is pretty fast now guys i mean this those those rotors are spinning they're spinning fast and now i'm accumulating power and that's because my pipe is only a one pipe and it can only hold 8 million millibuckets and I'm currently producing 12. So right now I'm accumulating power. If I place this pipe just on it, it doesn't necessarily have to be in between. It's just on it. Now uh, I'm not accumulating power in the industrial turbine anymore because enough of it can go through the cables to come into the induction casing or induction uh, matrix. So that's something that we're going to have to pay attention to. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and place all of these down um that should that should be good for now so uh, that should actually hold that should support a burn rate that's pretty high 200 or so all right <clears throat> so uh water is okay water started going down and started coming back up that's great our fuel is going uh down naturally uh, we don't have any extra material uh and then i don't have a way to watch my barrels down there which is a problem so you know what let's do this fast because i don't want to you know, I don't want to have an issue. So 128, let's double it. So this this is the number I'm going to be watching because these are still empty and they're not going to come up. So the coolant tank will go down and then it'll start going back up. And as long as it starts going back up, it doesn't hit zero and the temperature doesn't start spiking, we're golden. All right, so we're good here. Uh, power is still not accumulating. Uh, so you know what, let's go again to, uh, well, you know what, let's do 192 now. Let's start adding more reasonable amounts i don't want to be doubling every single time okay and this is why you have to start slowly too because you could in theory cold start this fission reactor to 550 but you don't have enough water so i'm pumping more and more water into the system to keep it cool um if you're just depending on what you had in the system you could definitely not uh cold start it to 550 you can titrate it up because you're adding more coolant but if you're just going to go with how much is in here plus the pipes you're limited to a particular number which i will figure out what that number is and probably just keep it there all right, so we're good to go there. Let's keep let's keep cranking this thing up. And once I get to, let's let's just say let's just halfway ish. Two fifty six is not halfway, but you know, halfway ish. Uh, then I will. I got to go check those tanks down below and uh, make sure that we're not, you know, accumulating too much at once. Um, okay, power is still not accumulating in here. That's good. So those pipes are are doing their job. Uh, water is now on the uptick and there is um there's no heated coolant accumulating down there so we're looking really really good so far um this is um for some reason oh 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 uh oh okay we get it's got to be daylight guys it's got to be daylight hurry up hurry up here hurry up hurry up hurry up hurry up hurry up hurry up <laughs> the solar neutron activator does not work at night so if you are running this and you afk Bad things can happen, guys. Bad, bad things. Because if that, um, 
if that nuclear waste accumulates too much then um you're, you're in big trouble so all right this thing is 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 producing and using up nuclear waste so while i'm here let's go check the radioactive and okay we're doing good we're doing good uh, 2000 i think these things can hold quite a bit so we're looking we're looking like we're doing okay okay uh let's go to i don't really have i need to set one for the um i need i need one that's right here basically all right let's uh let's let's push the limits on this thing okay so let's go to 320 and there you go the water's starting to decline really really fast now it should come back up soon there we go it's going back up we're not accumulating anything the power should start to accumulate now so we got to be fast uh let's go to 400 and okay it does not like 400 let's go back down to 320 um we did that too fast so but theoretically what we'd have to do is let that pump fill this machine with more water and then crank it up to 400. i did accumulate a little bit of damage because the temperature got too high so nine percent and it should in theory um recover itself but i think the temperature has to go under 1000 so this is when a sodium cooled fission reactor would be necessary because sodium fueled is more efficient on volume water is not so uh i think we might have just about reached this thing's maximum at water which means i i have to do sodium <laughs> uh let's try 340 nope okay so three 320 now let's change to 322 no alarm 324 326 328 330 330 is at 1.18. Wow. So we are really pushing the limits here. So 332, uh, 334, 336, 338. Yeah, that's it. So 336. 336 is the theoretical limit. I didn't know this. This is new for me. So 336 is the theoretical limit. And it's not theoretical. It's practical here of this um, <laughs> fission reactor with water. And so to be able to use the rest of the burn rate, I would have to uh, use sodium. But again, 336 is ridiculous. I mean, look at how many polonium pellets we've made already. 154. Like, that's insane. That's a lot. I mean, we don't really, we're not going to need more than that for a long time. A hundred, a couple of hundred polonium pellets will do everything you need to do in this game. So I've already, I've already gotten more polonium than I really need. Um, and we've not really even dipped into most of our fissile fuel. So this thing has worked very, very well. Uh, I guess the only other thing is the power, right? So I've accumulated 23, 24,000 gigajoules plus 324. So we've we've not even really scratched the surface on the total amount of power that we can get in this machine. So now I can just let this thing run. Um, obviously, I'd have to add more cables to make that thing run better. But uh, yeah, we have found the theoretical max, 336 with water. And if I wanted to go higher than this, I'd have to go 334. But everything else worked out. I'd have to go with sodium to go above that. Um, and uh, yeah, everything else has uh, completely worked. It's worked perfectly. So I'm very pleased, guys. Um, I'm going to shut this baby down now. 334 is ridiculous. And watch this. So now once the temperature goes below 1,000, it should start to magically repair itself. Um, I'm not sure. There you go. So we're from 19 to 18. And now this thing should start emptying out its uh, its its storage that's in the electromagnetic coils up above and then this uh should just have a little bit of polonium sitting down below so we have successfully burned the max rate with water with this fusion uh, fission reactor um this is something i've never ran into before i guess they've made some balance changes so now if i want to burn higher i've got to go with sodium do i want to do that let me know in the comments i'll get into it if uh, the overwhelming majority of you guys want me to but i really do think nobody needs to burn higher than 100 millibuckets per tick and we've we've already cracked 300 so i'm very pleased i'm happy with how things turned out and now i've got more polonium pellets than ever so next episode we'll be getting into crafting with some polonium pellets and and that my friends is a good time so thank you so much for tuning in hope you enjoyed and i'll see you all next time